O projeto é que se chama Alternative Citizenship. Ok. Mais ou menos. Mas vocês já vão explicar isso. Agora, o que eu queria dizer é que, pronto, as perguntas vão ter que ser feitas em inglês, porque ela, os nossos os elementos de, do grupo só falam inglês e nós vamos tentar depois fazer uma pequena tradução. Antes de mais, este projeto arrancou no dia 25 de abril, certo? Uhum. Que é o dia da nossa revolução, uhum. vocês já devem saber. E, portanto, são seis caravanas diferentes que arrancaram de que cidade? De Barcelona. A vossa foi de Barcelona, mas as outras caravanas arrancaram de diferentes locais, não é? Uhum. Portanto, tentaram compilar uma uhum. série de, 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 de eixos uhum. que são importantes neste momento de bater a nível europeu, principalmente que se prendem com minorias que, que não podem ter uma voz ativa e, assim sendo, o que vocês também têm vindo a fazer é entrarem em contacto com uma série de associações. How many associations have you been to uh, yeah. since you started the trip? trip no? Yes. Oh God! In the trip, we visit like I think we have fifteen, fifteen, maybe yeah. more. Yeah, yeah. But in eight days. De hecho, a nivel de número de de corruptos. Uh, de casos judiciales donde mayor hay, en términos relativos y absolutos, es en Valencia. ¿no? Hay unos 1.150 casos judiciales con gente acusada por corrupción y, sin embargo, en la Comunidad Valenciana hay 300 cargos públicos de gobierno autonómico y locales del Partido Popular, la mayoría, y 100 eh, familiares y funcionarios eh, pendientes de juicio, porque solamente hay uno en la cárcel, de estos casi 400, y eh, digamos que en toda España no llega a 1.200, o sea, casi la tercera parte están en la Comunidad Valenciana. Y sin embargo solo hay uno en la cárcel, una persona. Y se trataba de defender una industria rentable y muy fuerte en la, en la ciudad de Alicante. Porque ya no solo mi empleo, el de mi compañero, el de tal, es el que si esa industria se va, no va a generar más empleo. Y aquí en Coca-Cola han trabajado generaciones de alicantinos. Y a partir de ahora no van a trabajar, simplemente porque la planta se ha cerrado, dando beneficios, que ese es el mayor problema. Pues bueno, atendimos una llamada del gobierno que decía, bueno, hay que cumplir los acuerdos de Kioto y hay que lanzarse en invertir en energías renovables y os pedimos, casi se nos llegó a pedir la colaboración, vamos, esa es la idea, ¿no? Te facilitan hasta los créditos, te los facilitan todo, te ponen una alfombra perfecta, te dicen... Hoy usted, usted no tiene, no se preocupe, los créditos se los damos automáticamente, usted no tiene que ir a firmar y de pronto te, te cambian, la, te cambian la, la, la regla del juego a mitad del partido y te encuentras, pues, valga la expresión, mirando al sol, diciendo, pero ¿qué pasa aquí? Então, uh, basicamente o que este grupo está a fazer é uh, está a dar voz ao Pacto Cidadão, uh, tentar que cada vez mais pessoas tenham acesso uh, a estas questões. Pretendem dar uma voz uh, a, quem, a quem não a tem no Parlamento Europeu, sendo que cada vez mais só os assuntos de âmbito mais económico e financeiro costumam ser ponderados. Hasta el 2009 nadie se enteró en Córdoba de que el obispado había inmatriculado la mezquita catedral en el registro de la propiedad. Nadie la había inmatriculado y dice, pues esto es mío. En eso consiste la inmatriculación. Parece mentira, parece mentira que el Ayuntamiento de Córdoba y el Gobierno de España prefiera defender la titularidad privada por encima de la titularidad pública. La pregunta es qué tipo de gente no está gobernando, qué tipo de políticos nos están gobernando. Están en contra 
de lo que realmente representan, que es lo público. ¿no? Hemos durado 14 años, gente tan dispar, tan diversa, decía, aquí hay vecinas con 80 años, eh, hay comerciantes, hay asociaciones, hay artistas, hay personas ideologizadas, eh, ya puedan ser socialistas, comunistas, cristianos, eh, 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 ecologistas, aquí hay tal gama que no se explica cómo pueden convivir tantos años sin ninguna subvención siendo tan activo, tan creativo y manteniendo todavía esa relación también con su pasado. Es decir, somos innovadores y también mantenedores de eh, nuestras tradiciones. Entonces, esa mezcla y esa capacidad organizativa, también tan básica, tan simple, una asamblea al mes, una persona que lleva la contabilidad, que es muy básica, es muy simple y una persona que distribuye los espacios para que no se pisen unos a otros. Eh, con esa simple organización se, se funciona. Esto es como un organismo vivo, esto es un ecosistema y va creando su ecorriqueza. Nosotros la riqueza no es el dinero, nosotros la riqueza son significados, valores y que la gente lo, lo recree constantemente. Por tanto, traer una otra un outro tipo de, 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 de questões e de problemas à, à, à União Europeia e, nomeadamente, numa altura em que estamos a chegar às eleições, para que os, quem virá, venha agora a ganhar estas eleições europeias possa pegar neste manifesto e estar, ter conhecimento de algumas minorias e problemas que, que, que estão também na ordem do dia e possam levá-las a, a debate. hundreds of thousands of Portuguese workers that live with less than 500 euros per month. 500 euros per month is not enough, not even in the cheapest places in Portugal to raise a family, to have a, a decent life. There is a, a basic problem which is uh, in Europe different uh, states with different uh, economic structures are invited to live under uh, the same rules. And uh, this crisis has been a demonstration that uh, these rules, these common rules, are not uh, really adapted to, to, to different economic structures. So this is a basic challenge uh, that Europe has, uh, has to deal with. At a certain point, uh, most of the people, most of the Portuguese po population uh, stopped to believe on the possibility of, al uh, of an alternative. So we try to engage as many people as possible in this discussion, in this, in this process of uh, building alternatives to the present state of affairs. And the CDA was very important because it joined uh, people from various uh, spectrum of uh, the opposition, P 
people from different parties, people from uh, the Socialist Party, the Left Bloc, the Communist Party, and, and other sensibilities, and people that uh, didn't have any um, formalization with parties, uh, academics, economists, sociologists, everyone, that, uh, and they joined together to make a political proposition. I don't know if you know where it came from. Well, no. the uh, the found yeah. founders of yeah. the organization they organized the biggest protest we had in Portugal after the 25th April. Yeah. It was the Geração Arrasca protest. It was uh, after the the Arab uh, Spring in uh, 2010. Yeah. It's the origin also for other movements like... Uh, the 15M started yeah. from yeah, okay. there. Uh, the Indignados movement. Mm -hmm. From what I know, people came from Spain and from other countries in Europe and mm -hmm. met here yeah. in April uh, to organize mm -hmm. this, uh, this meeting. You mixed math mathematics with music and yeah. with astrology and with the philosophy and... You know, so that's the, the idea of uh, academy. It's the knowledge is integrated and the action is also integrated with the knowledge and uh, of course, yeah, that, that's it. The, the system is organized with this, se this separation uh, between uh, things. And we, if we, we think that this system f failed in a, in a way, we don't want to, to build something new based in uh, the old principles that we know that have failed. Let's try to, to think about different things and uh, build things in a different way with uh, connecting uh, all these uh, different inputs from different uh, origins. In a way, we will empower, we hope to empower lots of other people and they, these people can uh, bring change to their lives and to, to their uh, communities. And, uh, step by step, uh, we, are, we hope to, to change things and uh, give power to, to people and make them realize that uh, they're just, they don't have to vote just every four years or five uh. years. And uh, what would you do to change the place where you live? Uh, your street, your neighbor, your country? Uh, what would you, would you do to change the place you live? Or the world. Or the world. Yeah, you can you can you know you yeah. can go from you, changing the world or just the place you live or just your street or just your home I don't know. We do not believe that uh, Europe is either politically or socially uh, viable if we insist on this uh, low wage precarious uh, economic uh, development model for the southern uh, brief. So what is happening now in Europe is not only a destruction of uh, the European project as a whole, but is a destruction of uh, the basic sense of democracy. And, uh, we have to deal with this, with, with this contradiction in Portugal, because even though we would like to have a different Europe, we are not expecting Europe to, to change significant, significantly in the short to medium term. And in meanwhile, we have to defend our democracy, we have to defend the, the sovereign right of the people to decide on an, uh, our common future. And at a certain point, this might mean to defend the right to protect Portugal and the Portuguese people from decisions taken at the European level. Slightly delayed, as always. <laughs> Since we are traveling around and we want to hear your voices, we want to know about your struggles, the associations you may be part of. Um, maybe you have some demands towards the EU level, maybe you have some other struggles that you feel you share with people elsewhere in Europe. The questions that we're asking, why are we here, where are we going, feeling this uncomfortable feeling, for me that's connected to the fact that the system we do live in is not the answer. But neither do we know the answer. And, and I think one of the troubles is that we always try and look for solutions. And I think that is da dangerous because whenever we come up with one big solution that we impose from above, that doesn't work because it, it ignores the differences 
of localities, the diversity of the people, different demands in different areas. So my personal belief is that, that if there is any kind of solution or a way to govern ourselves that will be more socially just, it has to grow from below. It has to organically grow in its different places. We need a community sense, we need to connect, we need to talk to each other, we need to know about each other, we need to understand that the struggles we face here are connected with the struggles others face. And only with that community sense can we then de develop and grow from below our ways of living with it and still keeping in mind that we are a bigger community and we face the same struggles. If you, if you do go and vote, uh, think about your European companions. Think about the people that may not be able to vote. Think about the people that may not have a strong voice as well as the issues. Mm -hmm. we'll take that into account. Ok, então quando, quando forem votar, quem for votar para estas uh, eleições europeias, para, para que pensem na, na, naqueles que não têm uma voz uh, ativa, que não podem expressar. If I believe that the harmony and um, inner silence could be happiness, also um, possibility to feel good from what you do and great from what you have done, uh, if that is happiness, yes, I am happy. But um, can I, what is life like here? Como é aqui? Formosa. Vim para o Bruno Verde. It's beautiful. It's concerned, isso? Verde. Me parece verde, le. Me parece estrela, le. Gaita vai estrela, le. Vai de monte, sim. Eles têm contato direto com a natura. Não me trevem intermediar. Sim. Acho que tinha me trevem mesmo. Europa trebuie să fie într-adevăr unită. Deci Europa trebuie să lucre în aceeași direcție toți, să avem aceleași legi, aceleași principii și aceleași valori. Să fie toate pentru toți. Nu mai mult pentru unii și mai puțin pentru alții. Dacă se realizează, asta depinde de și noi, de cei europeni de rând, Cum reușim să facem politicul din Europa să ne asculte părerile? Wow. It's pretty it's pretty hard question because what make me feel happy that's what I'm feeling and what is in my mind is the thing who make me feel happy but also my belief that we create a surrounding from the people who are happy also. I have moments when I'm happy, when I'm really, really happy. I consider myself to be an optimistic person. Uh, I also have moments when I feel really depressed. <laughs> so it depends on what happened the day before, or a couple of hours before. It, it, it depends on many things. I, I think if I 
have an apple, then I feel much, much better than I don't know, generally speaking, I, I feel like I'm being torn, torn between influences. So here in Romania, I feel like between two worlds, so to speak. It's, it's the Russian heritage, it's, it's the communist heritage, and also the, all the possibilities which are being uh, uncovered now by the European Union and all the process of integration and so on. So, yeah, I'm in between those, those worlds. Jandarmii ne terorizează, acum mai puțin, dar până noiembrie și decembrie am fost terorizați, putem spune. Nu puteai să ieși noaptea pe drum, că deja te întreba nici cu animalele la apă, n-aveai voie să ieși, că te întreba ce cu tine de unde ești și ce cauți, cu toate te vedea și faci, dar nu, trebuie să te facă în așa fel încât să nu mai ieși din curte. La noi nu a venit nimeni să ne dea explicații. Absolut nimeni. Nu a venit nimeni de la guvern, nu știu, de la nivel local. Nimeni, nimeni. Deci nimeni. Nimeni nu vorbește cu noi. Noi suntem cetățenii nimănui. I think happiness is something very gently and thin and very hard to feel it. So sometimes you think you already get it, but you don't. You, you missed it all. I find this work extremely rewarding, uh, but then there are times when it is extremely sad. And if you ask me in those days, I would say, well, we cannot talk about happiness. Suntem romii de pe strada coastei care am fost evacuați în 2010. Acum locuim în apropierea râmpii de gunoi și o fosă chimicală, terapia. Aș vrea să mă de aici, de sincer. Mă, mai așa mai direct, She really wants to move here. Everybody wants to live in a decent place. Nu avem căldură, nu avem apă caldă. Avem o locuință foarte mică, de 16 metri, respectiv 18 metri pătrați. Și sunt familii care sunt câte 12 membri, sau 13, sau 7 membri. Nu știu cum poate o familie cu așa mulți membri să locuiască doar într-o singură cameră. Viața aici este grea, este foarte frig. Suntem discriminați. Când mergem în oraș, suntem segregați, suntem discriminați din toate punctele de vedere. Nu ni se dă un loc de muncă din cauza că locuim în acest loc. Nu primiți copiii la școală la care vrem noi din cauza că locuim aici. Deci, din cauza acestei zone în care locuim, întâmpinăm foarte multe probleme la oraș. Bună ziua! Mai mult you know, you know who's responsible for internet here? Yeah? This guy. He did the project. Yeah. Yeah, he did. IT cluster? Câți ani ai? 17. Mulți înainte. 17. So I think that happiness is something that uh, is about human relations and is about your perspective of development. And I think that Patarut tells a lot about how development is possible. And not only because of the people who, who, who are here and who really struggle for their everyday existence. They provide a lot of inspiration for all of us as volunteers, but I think that also uh, the fact that many organizations uh, simply uh, Uh, when they hear about the initiatives in Patarut, they join in and they try to help.
the refugees and migrants who come in Bulgaria, Bulgaria for them mostly, unfortunately, statistics says that for, uh, they they would uh, they use it as a transit country. So you have to learn by yourself. By yeah, and by yourself. Yeah. Uh, to learn, so you can find the work here. Work here, sure. Who do you have work here? If Bulgarian people not all day go, we will work it here. And they un- end up normally, uh, uh, normally illegally, because especially after 2007, it's not possible to do it otherwise. Today, yeah, like yeah, yeah. you saw what happens and there was no motivation to stay, uh, to learn the language. Uh, of course, the house is big. You, you saw the conditions where they live and uh, uh, everything that, I mean, you degrade living in these conditions, any willy-nilly. So you can't, you can't really keep a level uh, when you live in, under these conditions. How are you? Hi, how are you? So Welcome, welcome to the cafe. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Okay. 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 I have four grandchildren, all other boys. Boris, Eivor, Damian, and Kamen. Only Damian is with Greek name. The other three are with Bulgarian names. Meaning about something you're looking for make us alive. So uh, since I feel not enough happy and going after my happiness, I will be alive. Αυτή είναι αψηφιά. Είναι αψηφιά, είναι από αυτό το βότανο φτιάχνουν το αψέντι. Ευτυχισμένος μπορεί να είναι οποιοδήποτε άνθρωπος από το, για το πιο μικρό μέχρι το πιο ασήμαντο ή το, το πιο σπουδαίο πράγμα, ας πούμε. Εμείς εδώ μέσα από αυτή τη συλλογικότητα έχουμε βρει μια διέξοδο διαφυγής, έχουμε βρει ένα μια πλατφόρμα συζήτησης ε, για να αντιμετωπίσουμε τα, τα θέματα και τα, τα προβλήματα που διογκώνονται μέρα με τη μέρα. Ανανοίχτηκα του εγώ, άκουσα ότι υπάρχει για αυτό το θέμα και μοιράζω τα τρέφημα και αυτά, θέλανε τη βοήθεια. Είμαι και άνεργος και δεν, δεν έχω τι να κάνω, οπότε είναι μια ευκολία για μένα. Να ξεφεύγω λίγο από το σπίτι. Βλέπουμε τρόφιμα με οικογένειες που δεν έχουν. Καλημέρα. Πρέπει να πηγαίνουμε στα κατάλληλα άτομα αυτά που έχουν ανάγκη. <laughs> αυτά τα πιστά ψάρια δηλαδή, που δίνουμε έσω και τα προϊόντα που παίρνετε από τους... Δεν ξέρω ότι παίρνετε φρούτα, μας σας δίνουν και τέτοια πράγματα. 
Είναι πολύ καλή πρωτοβουλία. Όλοι πρέπει να δείξουμε δυναμία και να, να φτάσουμε σε αυτού που δεν έχουν αφήσει. Πρέπει να του βοηθήσουμε όλου. Οι λαϊκέ αγορέ λειτουργούν σε όλη την Ευρώπη και σε κεντρικότατα σημεία. Και όχι μόνο. Μπορεί να είναι με διαφορετική μορφή, γιατί εκεί δεν υπάρχει η ευχαίρεια των πρώτων υλών, τη περίσσεω των πρώτων υλών. Εδώ, επειδή είμαστε παραγωγικέ χώρε, παράγουμε πάρα πολλά προϊόντα. Οπότε πρέπει να τα διαθέσουμε και πιο λαϊκά στον κόσμο. Δεν είναι το τύπο πειμένο που θα έρθει εισαγόμενο και να το βάλουμε ένα-ένα κομμάτι και να το πουλήσουμε το κομμάτι. Εδώ πουλούνται με το κιλό, καταλαβαίνετε, είναι μεγάλη παραγωγή. Γιατί να τα σηκώνουμε τι φορέ. Ό,τι έχω δίνω πάντα. Βέβαια. Κάτι θα γίνει. Δεν μπορεί η νέα γενιά που έρχεται μετά από μας να αφήσει τα πράγματα να ξυμηθούν έτσι άσχημα όπως είναι σήμερα. Σε αυτήν την ελπίζω και πουθενά αλλού. As individuals, we feel that we belong to something uh, where we all contribute, uh, where we can share, where we can develop. Whatever people want to do to feel like they're making a difference, it is a valid way of, you know, of expressing your wishes and you know, democracy, etc. We have to enable people to have their input into the say of how things can change. So you need this fertile gr ground to make things grow. I really would like to see that people who have creative ideas, that they put that again in the surface of, let's say, a, a common public dialogue. Okay. So we're here at uh, Future Chef Festival and uh, we met three really exciting uh, initiatives. Bike North uh, Birmingham, uh, Fizz Pop. Okay. Different sides of spectrum, young people. Talk with them. <laughs> Talk with them. Maybe. Future Shift came together about four months ago um, and we came together as a second um, programme of um, SOLVE which is the accelerator based in London um, and basically what we're doing is uh, bringing together that mix of resources, spaces, investment, um, mentorships, advice that can help people really turn their ideas and their passions into something real. The purpose of the festival really is a space for people to come together, people who are passionate, who feel really positive about the future and want to actually make ideas happen and we wanted to bring as many people together into a space and just to see what happens, let people lead the conversations, lead workshops, hacks and see, see what they care about, see what the responses are before we go into um, the, the, the formal accelerator process. The Eco Centre is basically, it's a non-profitable charity organisation, mainly, mainly focusing on helping people to live more, live more green, 
live more sustainably. Uh, we offer a lot of energy advice and energy assessments for domestic and non-domestic purposes. And basically, just 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 trying to help people help people care more about the environment and realise that you could be doing a lot better for the for the environment than what you maybe are doing at the time. You Can Bike Too is an all-ability cycle project set up uh, by a group of people with learning difficulties who are wanting to contribute something to their community. They loved cycling and they wanted to cycle somewhere safely off-road and Milton Country Park have provided a venue um, for the project. People first of all thought it was a project just for people with disabilities. Now they see it as a project uh, encouraging cycling for all. So people with and without disabilities sharing their time together, sharing resources, having an amazing fun time and using the word fun again and again and making people smile. Today is really exciting because we've got the first co-founders meeting for Common Soup which is based on Sunday Soup which is a project, a soup grant program which combines two things that are really wonderful. One of them is communal eating so people coming together and sharing a meal together and the other is grant funding for, for civic projects. So the Common Room is a new kind of shared space. Um, yeah, it's kind of still an experiment that we're running in the, in the church. So this is an amazing grade one listed church, as you can see it's beautiful, but it, isn't, it hasn't been used for, I think it's been like 40 years. And the Church's Conservation Trust, we're looking for a sustainable future. So that's how us, Zero Zero and Civic Systems Lab got involved to try and think of something that would work. Comme j'habite justement dans le quartier où se construit l'Europe politiquement, mais aussi euh, du point de vue beaucoup plus euh, euh, réel par les constructions, ben, la première chose que je demanderai à, à, à l'Europe, c'est déjà de commencer à avoir un rapport plus équilibré, plus proche, plus, plus de proximité avec les gens qui habitent juste à côté de chez eux. Je, je pense que s'ils apprennent à fonctionner un peu mieux avec les gens qui habitent autour de chez eux, Peut-être qu'ils apprendront à fonctionner un peu mieux avec, euh, avec les citoyens européens dans leur ensemble. The infringement of our privacy is a tool which will uh, and already is started to diminish the possibility of living in freedom. 
Vrijbit. A Dutch civil rights organization uh, which fights for maintaining our freedom and uh, tries to change the recent developments that our country and Europe is changing in a total surveillance society. What is it that unites us between people? And what is the work that brings out what's similar, that's common between people? And if we can see that, then we can build on that. zásadní roli i ta běžná veřejnost. To není jenom o tom, je potřeba vydat zákony, změnit systém, že je tam obrovská skupina lidí, kteří můžou mít velký vliv na to, jestli se celá tahle věc podaří nebo nepodaří. Problematiku hodně zviditelnil rozsudek Evropského soudu pro lidská práva v roce 2007. A tehdy se hlavně otevřela ta otázka vlastně důvodů, proč je tolik romských dětí zařazováno do základních škol praktických a vzděláváno vlastně podle osnov pro děti s lehkomentální retardací. Zhruba 40 žáků těchto škol je romských což je samozřejmě obrovský nepoměr k tomu, kolik procent Romů vlastně máme v České republice a kolik třeba se běžně v populaci vyskytuje dětí s lehkomentální retardací. Takže to číslo bylo natolik jakoby nesourodé, že se samozřejmě začalo řešit, jestli tam není ten problém někde jinde. Šobovu. Je to časť mimo mesta, kde bývajú prevažne Romovia a takí sociálne slabší ľudia. V každom slovenskom meste to tak bolo, že po tých 90. rokoch všetkých vysťahovali na okraj mesta. 
tak vravím, že tam je špina, tam sú takí ľudia, to sú zlí ľudia a tak ďalej. A ja tam je mám tam aj rodinu, taký, že ma to tak mrzelo. Mám tam aj rodinu, to ma to tak mrzelo. To bol taký podnes, že proste poďme tam pozrieť, poďme to tam dať dokopy, vlastne aby nemali tú predstavu o týchto našich Rómov. Aby tá nevraživosť nebola taká proste. Oni keď počuli Róm a Šobov, tak to boli proste veci, ktoré oni nechceli prijať medzi seba. Že proste Šobov je niečo, čo nepatrí do Šťavnice, nepatrí na Slovenské, jednoducho proste, že to sú mimo tí ľudia. Takže sme vytvorili také komunitné centrum, kde sa stretávali ľudia z celej komunity a potom sme mali takú akože kvázi škôlku, kde proste sme mali detská v predškolskom veku, kde som sa im ja osobne venovala v predškolskej výchove. V obedných hodinách sme sa venovali deťom, no bolo na časové aktivite, ako boli rôzne krúžky. Pokiaľ sme tam my neprišli, tak deti väčšinou išli do špeciálnych škôl. A ako sme tam vlastne my zriadili tú úvodzovku a škôlku, tak ani jedno dieťa nešlo do špeciálnej školy. Oni potrebujú pomoc ešte aj od buď pedagógov ďalších, alebo takýchto tých svojich, čo by vedeli vlastne učiť tie deti do učovania a takéto veci. Proste prispôsobiť to všetko. Lebo tí rodičia oni nemajú priority, že budem sa teraz detskom učiť. Im to je jedno. To je to, že nekladú veľký dôraz na vzdelanie. Vysáde! Pretože keď to dieťa je v špeciálnej škole, jeho život končí. Keď proste majú nejakú školu, tak sa to dieťa dokáže oveľa viacej v tom svete pohybovať a určite niečo viacej dosiahne, ako keď je len v špeciálnej škole. Takisto aj mamičky, lebo keď tie mamičky nič neposlali, lebo si tak myslia, že nás nebolo moja, že vlastne ty budeš za hrncom, ty budeš tuto, okolo detí sa stará, všetko budeš robiť a on bude buď v robote a on bude mať závodu teda tie peniaze. No ale... No a preto sme sa dali do tých romských materských centier, kde sme sa chceli tomuto vyhnúť. Takže najprv sme akože vzdelávali ženy a teraz pracujeme sami na sebe. Ja osobne napríklad ešte stále študujem, hej? Aj keď už mám 41, ale stále študujem. Keď budeme na sebe pracovať, budeme múdrejšie a môžeme vzdelávať ďalšie ženy. Nielen byť doma a sedieť a pozerať sa, že čo bude. Není to tak jednoduché, ako si to niekto myslí. Ak žena sa už odhodla, chce sa troška zapojiť možno do toho politického života, pretože chce zmeniť situáciu v prostredia, kde žije, ten muž to nepríjma. Tá žena už jednoducho doma nefunguje ako majetok toho muža, ale delí si tú prácu s tým mužom a to málo, ktorý muž chce prijať. Tiež som bola doma uzamknutá, nemohla som ísť von, len s ním proste váriť a všetko to ostatné. Takže je to vlastne tzv. Stále, tie rodové stereotypy sú všade. Ale u nás je to ešte horšie. Ale je to ešte horšie tým, že vlastne tá žena nemôže ísť. Tá romská žena sa... Áno, tá tu má. Tá romská žena to považuje za normálne. Ona ani sa nezamýšľa nad tým, že proste... A prečo vlastne ja nemôžem sa s nikým ani rozprávať? Sú muži, ktorí to pochopia. Možno, že by to nechápal, keby sme nepracovali v romské lokalite, hej? Že tam to videl priamo, že akí boli tí chlapi. Oni to berú proste ako vec. Ty si moja a proste ťa nepustím, lebo náhodou ťa niekto znásilní. Náhodou mi ujde s druhým. Proste oni sú strašne žiarliví. A to je ten problém tej mnohské rodiny. A preto sú tie rodové stereotypy strašné tam. On si musel rozmyslieť, buď chce ženu, alebo teda bude mať slúžku doma. A keďže ma chce a miluje, tak si musí vybrať, že áno, tak spravím nejaké ústupky, lebo ju chcem. Nechcem ju len ako slúžku, ale proste chcem, aby bola rovnocená. Áno. Troška sme aj my, také tie múdre ženy, snažíme sa tých svojich mužov alebo manželov do toho zatiahnuť. S tým, že im dáme také úlohy. Že to vlastne z časti oni pripravujú, aby pochopili tú našu situáciu, aby sa k nám pridali.
som do tých komunít a zisťovala som, čo oni potrebujú. Napríklad potrebovali ženy sa stretnúť takto pri káve, zapáliť si, porozprávať sa o svojich problémoch, v prípade možnosti si zájomne pomôcť, aby sa dá ako podporiť. Prišli aj také časy, že som nemala na tú elektrínu treba. Samozrejme, nezaplatila som byt, mala som na vyhadzov. Tuto pani Mariša mi pomohla, na splatky sa to dohodlo, splatila som, samozrejme znova taká kriza prišla. Ak som šla za politikmi, na výbor, za poslancami, takisto som nemala nárok. 2007 bolo založené prvé materské centrum v Detve, kde sme si to rok odskúšali, zistili sme, že je to vynikajúca vec. A vtedy sme prišli na to, že je výborné, keď romské ženy v materskom centre si dajú také heslo, že deťa nie je prekážkou. Lebo najväčšou prekážkou vlastne v týchto aktivitách v tomto rozvoji bolo, že keď ženy niekde mali ísť, tak nemali ide nahať deti. To predsa nie je priorita muža, však to je poniženie pre romského muža, aby on oprav, uváril, alebo bol s deťmi a žena mu, ja neviem, kde rajzovala. maličky ako vnášať medzi tie ženy, že ženy máte právo na to, aby ste sa tako vzdelávali, aby ste sa rozvíjali, aby to vaše myslenie bolo také, aké chcete vy, nie také, ako vám bolo vštepené. Morálne sme sa podporovali a spoločne sme vlastne toho manžela nabádali, že tá škola je dôležitá, že život sa môže zmeniť, môže byť aj lepšia práca a že dáva dobrý príklad svojim deťom. to baví a one skrátka one nerobia zlé deti. Aj učia sa do dom, doma a po škole sa vždy tešia he, napríklad cenka prísť a majú, no one sa tu majú fajn. Máš to zabezpečené, že sa im tu nadáme tomu, nič nemôže stať, že nepadnú do zlých koľají. Pomáha nám to, strašným sa, že my stretneme, porozprávame sa, poradíme si, urobili sme školku romskú pre také deti, ktoré sa nám nedostali do normálnych škôl a zistili sme, že to strašne pomáha našim deťom. Deti sa naučili farby, deti sa naučili počítať, naučili sa správať, naučili sa stolovať, jednoducho sme pomohli aj rodičom, aj deťom. Navštevovali sme s nimi psychologičku, ktorá nám tu detve spomohla strašne s deťmi. Robila nám plány, čo s deťmi máme robiť. Mali sme také deti, ktoré nevedeli ani hovoriť. A my sme ich do toho dotiahli, že sú jedni z najlepších v školách. Mám radosť z toho, keď vidím, že moje vnúča niekde vystupuje. Ja sa z toho teším, že niečo vie, že vidia iný svet, dajme tomu, že nevidí len detvu, že nevidí len ten pastovník. sa potulovali tu v okolí a nevedeli, čo sami so sebou. Veľký úspech bol v tom, že vlastne nešli do špeciálneho základnej školy, čo bolo veľmi dobré, pretože predtým sa automaticky dávali do špeciálnej základnej školy. A musím povedať, že detve už krachuje špeciálna základná škola, že keď tieto deti ukončia školu, oni už tam vlastne deti nebudú mať.
teda se snažíme, aby išli do normální školky. Když jsme podali rodičům, že dítě třeba dá do školky, že je to základ všetkého, milion problémů mají, hej, děravé pančušky, nemali si čeho vlíc. Ale ona nemá peněze. To znamená, že se pracovala i s dětmi, ale i s tou matkou. A ti děti po půl roku byly zaraděné do normální školy. My jsme učitelky, naším cílem je těto děti posouvat do společnosti. You are laughing. You speak English? No, 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 no. Easy, easy. Easy, okay. Polish. You have any dream that should become true? Any political dream? Can you translate? Yes, of course. Może job, żeby kurwa, żeby była praca, nie wiem. To have a job. Okay, write it down here. And we will send it yeah. to Europe. on the 10 days trip from Germany to Poland and we started in Berlin on the 25th of April going to Lublin. I think it's, it's a great idea because it, it starts with the thesis that another Europe already exists. So we have like the existing political system, we have the European Union and parties and politicians, but on the other hand we have a lot of people, of citizens working at different places, in different organizations, on LGBT rights, on Roma rights, on degrowth, so a lot of different concepts. And just to make them visible and to visit them was one of the aims of the project. You now sit here on the Platz Mostove, Brückenplatz. And last year we took this place and we said now this is a public space for all the Swoopfurgers. Another aspect of our work is civil society. To create the city ourselves and not let it be created by politicians up down, but from down up. Wir 
heute hier, weil der Konzern Vattenfall plant, einen neuen Tagebau aufzumachen, den Tagebau Nochten 2. Und für diesen Tagebau müssten mehrere Dörfer weichen und ein großer Naturraum. Und damit sind wir hier vor Ort natürlich nicht einverstanden, weil es auch wissenschaftlich kaum noch eine Begründung gibt, das zu tun. This is not only a unique situation, there is more uh, yeah, lignite mines on the map and one of their biggest will be um, on, on the Polish border, so which is, makes it a big international or big European thing, which is not only affecting locally people, because if you look at the effects which uh, brown coal mining has, the mining and the burning, it has an, an health impact on everyone in, in Europe, because the Emissions are traveling as far as London, as far as uh, Moscow, as far as Rome. In our economy, um, a very few people decide very complicated issues and leave most of the society behind with those decisions. So we first think that the economy has to be um, more easily understood and um, have more people have to be implicated into the decisions concerning the economy. We should try to um, produce and consume more lo locally, more regionally um, and um, with pro less products <laughs> which uh, can be um, used longer, so which can be repaired and have a long, uh, long life term duration. I'm a lesbian and I feel that the situation of uh, LGBT people in Poland is uh, very, very hard. It's absolutely uh, impossible uh, for people, uh, for uh, same-sex people to have marriage or even partnership. Uh, it's just illegal. В Чечені я була навчителькою російського язика. І якби, якби я знайшлася таку працю, вже я б могла б реалізуватися. Ну, ну, робити так само, щоб я могла когось, хто є заінтересований, учити російського. А так, то, щоб діти були здорові і не цвенці. Well, this trip is about boosting European democracy. Because, you know, democracy is two things. There's a legal thing, and also democracy is an attitude. And the legal thing is you have to work on lobbyism, you have to go to Brussels and make, like, policy making. But the attitude is about actually getting people into this feeling of saying, yes, I want to decide, and yes, I have a voice, and yes, I have an opinion, and I'm asked, so what we're doing, we go out there with this car on this project and try to get this attitude aspect of the democracy going. Ah, here he is. Can we ask questions now? Questions? Ask? Mr. Schulz, may we ask a few questions? It must be very exhausting now to travel a lot. Wouldn't it be great if people take more responsibility and support politicians in Europe? If people could take more responsibility so that it's not so exhausting for you to travel all around Europe, so that people would more decide. How? Five minutes. Conference press, okay? Okay. Oh, the democracy car is coming. That's great. They want to give you 
That's very interesting. Oh, that's so interesting. You can write a love letter to Europe if you like. Yeah? Okay, perfect. When we are on the street, we are not Lucas and Kim, we play different roles. For example, we are this role of the crazy person asking people what you want to do. And by dressing like this, you get a connection to people you wouldn't get if you were like just normal. So we play different roles, asking questions and getting reactions. And by that, I'm starting thinking processes about democracy, about what could I do. And this is what interests us. It's all about creating weird, funny, emotional images in order to actually get people smiling about something. And then in that moment where they smile, we give them you know, the flyers, the papers, ask them to sign, ask them to go to the website, and ask them to join us now fight for more democracy in Europe. We came to Lodge this morning and it's the 1st of May, so it's like the big demonstration and uh, we prepared our car in order to look official. We just joined the queue, just asked the police, oh, where do we have to enter? They said, oh, go over there. So we entered the queue and went into that parade, uh, interrupted a bit and uh, brought some attention on the topic of uh, bringing more democracy to Europe. It is a present from my grandmother uh, to me which is very nice because uh, my grandfather and my grandmother, they had a place to repair and to sell cars, Citroëns. And then she decided two years ago, I don't know, okay, I really would like to give you this car as a memory for me and my grandfather. And I accepted it and really enjoyed it. Although sometimes um, re repairing the car is not so cheap, but it's, it's worth it. For me, I don't know, Kim is, uh, Kim is a very close friend, but I would say to, to get an impression of how, he, how like our relationship is, it's something between brother, uh, good friend and wife. With all advantages and disadvantages all these relationships have. He's like a brother and he's best friend and somehow I think I... It sounds a bit kitschy, but I think I really, I really love him in a way. Like, because there's so much trust. Like, I know like everything. If he behaves like this, I know, oh, he's in that mood. So, um, basically, as I said, we are we married in a way. Yeah. Okay, write it down here. And we will send it to Europe. In Polish. In Polish. You can write it in Polish. It's very good. And we make it to the balloons and send it up in the air. Do you have something? Żeby był pokój w tych wszystkich naszych krajach, które które są. No jakie jeszcze może być polityczne, może nie? Was nein mit dem Ding, ja? Okay. Bei drei los. Bei drei, eins. Warte. Uh, our dreams.
cannot always measure it like in a statistic way, but I believe that it has, uh, yeah, on a personal level and also on a media level, um, it starts processes which um, we want to achieve. I strongly believe that actions like the one we do are really needed in the political sphere. Because, you know, if we see these politicians like talking like, you know, there is no alternative and we have to do it this way and blah, blah, blah. You know, it's so far away from emotional, like from feelings or from dreams or from longings, you know, from all this, which actually can give you power to do something. And for me, it's important to show that Europe is not equal with EU. My understanding of Europe is the understanding as the Citizens Caravan has it, to have different people at different places, caring on different issues, but being actively involved in politics. My dream is that people, and including myself, take some, some stuff less serious. For example, hierarchies which, which exist, which determ determine us in our everyday actions and on the other hand take some other stuff very serious. For example, how can we decide on, this on decisions that affect us? This trip ends once we arrive in Berlin. But the big trip beyond, you know, the road to democracy, that will end if we have real democracy in Europe, which means everyone living in Europe can decide upon the future of Europe. There are so many lives lost in Sahara Desert before you can enter Libya. Libya is a war ground. A day, if you survive a day in Libya, it's like you make heaven. Material sea is a journey of life and death, 50-50. And we are happy God is by our side, we survive it down to Europe. Vengono in Italia per trovare lavoro, non per, Giusto, no? eh, per trovare lavoro, aiutare le famiglie. Oh, e il problema cose. è che non c'è lavoro. <ride> Tu quanti anni hai che sei qui? Oh, 16 anni, lo so. 16? Quello 16 e 7. Sei stato anni, il primo? Sì. Primo, sì. Che non c'è lavoro, non c'è niente, non, non vogliono stare qui. Solo passaggio in Italia, solo qualcosa. Siriani, siriani, soprattutto i siriani vanno via subito. Coming to Europe is a different case. Yes, for document is another thing. Without document in Europe, you are nothing. You can't live, you can't work, you can't eat. Document here is part of our life. That's why we risk our life all the way from our country based on the safety, the problem we face in our continent, Africa. That's how we came to this place. We suffer between life and death. That's how we find ourselves here, to find a better life. Per esempio ci sono pure i problemi di sanità, e ci manca informazione, e gli uffici di impiego che non funzionano per niente, eh, l'abitazione che ci manca, per esempio non, la gente non vogliono affittare la loro casa, eh, lavoro di condizione che non... Eh, 
che non sono alle norme, diciamo. No, i miei figli sono integrati, il, il bello è che non vogliono tornare neanche in Algeria. Io sto in mezzo, i diritti non ci sono, voglio andare, i miei figli non vogliono andare, ci si sentono, comunque loro si sentono come italiani. C'è il mio figlio è integrato, se lo porto in Algeria ci perde, ci perde la scuola, ci perde tutte cose. Qua erano sugli 700, 700 e qualcosa. Tutti di Marocco o misti? No, Marocco. erano misti. Qua era organizzato, cioè, quello che dico io. Ci hanno fatto pure i docce, ci hanno fatto pure il, il comune di Eboli. Ah. Ci ha portato pure la fontana dell'acqua. Ah. Il, il comune di Eboli comunque ce l'aveva la disponibilità di fare qualcosa. Sono venuti la mattina presto. E poi l'hanno fatto il sgombro e gli immigrati non sanno neanche, neanche dove vanno. C'è scritto, entra in Italia e trovi la tua famiglia. Ci sono i puri italiani che lavorano con me, ci fanno la stessa cosa, sono, sono nelle stesse condizioni nostre. Lì donna, tu ti vedi una donna che lavora sotto serra, che tiene 56, 57 anni, cioè, io personalmente mi dispiace, se quanto la vedo sotto di serra. Vediamo, noi sono in scale di qua. Per esempio non siamo in Europa, ecco, cioè, a livello immigrazione cioè, non siamo in Europa. Siamo da un altro paese, perché in Europa, in Francia, in Germania, da tutti i paesi funziona che è appena nato e cittadino. un'esperienza che è nata nel 2012, il 13 novembre. Abbiamo occupato uno spazio per riqualificarlo e restituirlo alla città e ai cittadini che sono i legittimi proprietari di questo spazio. Un'esperienza anche abbastanza travagliata che appunto ha subito due sgomberi, e però grazie a pratiche di cooperazione e di relazioni sia con i residenti del quartiere che con associazioni, gruppi, collettivi che si muovono a Bologna eh, ha trovato, ha trovato la, la giusta forma e la giusta vita in questo momento. Ah, perché no, infatti era questo lato qua. Ci oh. sono diverse stanze, possono ospitare questa casa dalle 5, 6 persone e che come il resto della caserma erano abbandonate da fin da più di 15 anni. E per tutti i muoi, cioè prima non era così, tutti i muoi, anche, anche il bagno, l'abbiamo sistemato insieme ai ragazzi dello sci, poi l'abbiamo lanciata pubblica la giornata, per cui abbiamo risistemato tutti i muri esterni, <coughs> appaltamento e c'era anche altra gente, tra cui persone che poi dopo sono, hanno fatto parte dell'assemblea de, 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 degli abitanti del crowdhousing. Cioè, come qua a Bologna, in tante altre città italiane, ma in Europa ci sono tantissime eh, case vuote, abbandonate, appunto di diverse proprietà dal pubblico al privato, noi abbiamo trovato una soluzione comune in questo momento, comune, cioè fatta insieme in forma cooperante, ma eh, bisogna che eh, si inizi a eh, fare ragionamenti seri su come eh, usare queste, questi spazi abbandonati o lasciati solo alla rendita economica e finanziaria per darli a chi ne ha bisogno, cioè, perché questo qui è il discorso. Questo qui lo facciamo eh, costantemente cercando sempre di andare al di fuori e oltre quello che, eh, quello che già abbiamo ottenuto, cioè eh, un tetto per 20 persone e un modo di fare, un modo di, di relazionarci diverso che appunto sta nel, eh, nel termine crowd housing che abbiamo coniato, inventato per questa esperienza. Chiaramente è un progetto in divenire che appunto in un momento come questo può essere eh, fonte e ricchezza di propulsività dal basso e eh, quindi delle forze eh, che attraverso la cooperazione realmente vogliono cambiare eh, questo mondo, l'Europa, l'Italia, Bologna e il quartiere Santo Stefano in questo, in questo luogo qua.
popolo delle tende, dovunque abbiate accampato, al Cairo come a Barcellona, sotto il Partenone come su Barconi al largo di Lampedusa, tra le banche di Francoforte come tra Robigne di una ferrovia per Milano, alle periferie di Gaza come sotto le torri di Tel Aviv. Popolo per dignità, fatelo per noi, piantate una tenda, aprite i vostri palmi e alzate lo sguardo perché ciò che si eleva converge. Por fin tenemos foto de, 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 con una auténtica caravana. I promise. Okay. <laughs> in the, in the <laughs>